What is up, my friends? You're very, very welcome along to tonight's Anfield Agenda News Roundup video. First off, I want to apologise if you can hear the noise of a fan in the background. As I'm sure you're aware, it's pretty warm at the minute. And my little dog is on the sofa, absolutely melting, refusing to move. So I had to turn the fan on to him while I record this video just to make sure that he isn't too warm and stuff like that. So I do apologise. Uh, as always, I'm going to take you through the latest Liverpool news stories. All I ask is that you let me know your thoughts in the comment section. Please do drop a like on the video. And of course... If you would be so kind, subscribe as well if you haven't already done so. Tonight we'll be live on Twitch at 8.30pm as you'll find us most nights. The link to the Anfield Agenda Twitch channel is in the description below. Right, let's start off with Ben Davies, shall we? Ben Davies today completed his move to Rangers in a £4 million deal. Uh, if I'm right, I think we paid an initial five hundred grand down payment. Down payment's probably the wrong phrase here, but initial five hundred grand to Preston for Ben Davies. And I think they had a 20% sell-on clause in there as well. I know the deal could have potentially rose to over a million with add-ons and stuff, but... I don't imagine he's hit many of those add-ons considering he hasn't played a single minute competitively for Liverpool. But his career is now back on track and he will make the move up to Glasgow Rangers. Which is a little bit ironic because he was supposed to sign for Celtic before Liverpool came in and got him last minute. So he's off up to Scotland anyway, just a different part of Glasgow at this particular time. Right, Reese Williams, another Liverpool player who has today left the club, albeit this is only a loan move. He's gone to Blackpool for the upcoming season. Give him a chance to gain invaluable minutes at centre back. And look, I've got to be honest, I don't think Reese Williams will make it long term at Liverpool. But a low move to Blackpool will do him no harm whatsoever. So we will keep an eye on him throughout the season and hopefully give you guys some updates and stuff like that as well. Now, a little bit of what I told you so. Just a little bit, not too much, just a little bit of I told you so. So Fabrizio Romano, who I think most people will admit is pretty good with transfers or pretty popular with transfer stories. So he has confirmed Liverpool's interest in. Jude Bellingham. He said Jurgen Klopp is a huge admirer of the player and that Liverpool sounded out Borussia Dortmund this summer and were told in no uncertain terms that he isn't available. Next summer is the earliest where they would even consider selling him and he will be a Liverpool player. As I've told you all along, I've told you for the past year or so, he'll be a Liverpool player next summer. All I ask, all that I ask is that you just give me a little bit of credit somewhere because I know that this story is going to be in every paper when it happens and I promise you, you won't see our name attached to it anywhere even though we were the first ones to tell you guys about it and the first ones by a very long way. Uh, so look, on that anyway, I did feel that it was going to be... Um, a bit optimistic for it to happen this summer. I know that there were people in different forms of social media or in different sites that said Liverpool were looking to get it done this summer. I think they were always told it wasn't going to happen. So to me, I'd always thought it was going to be next summer, but I'm not going to complain whenever it happens. Yes, we have been linked with other midfielders and yes, we did look at Arley and Choumeni, but we know that that didn't work out for obvious reasons because he's gone to Real Madrid. Uh, on the other midfielders, look, I still have no updates on Matthias Nunch and whether that player will be coming in from Sporting or not. Uh, and also we've been linked with Sangar as well from Eindhoven. I touched on those two guys yesterday in the video. Still have no idea whether the links are true or not. And I'm not going to come on and lie to you. So we'll push on to the next topic. Believe it or not, I know time flies quickly, but believe it or not, it is four years today to the day, obviously, surprisingly enough, that we signed Alison Becker from Roma. I think Alison will probably go down as the greatest goalkeeper of my lifetime anyway at Liverpool. I know Ray Clements. I know a lot of people were uh, are, are rightly impressed with Ray Clements' time at the club, but it was a little bit before my time. So for me, it's only really between himself and Pepe Reina. And as much as I did love Pepe Reina, I think we can all agree that Alison has set the bar even higher. And it's mad, four years. In one way, it feels like it's flown by. And in another way... It feels like a lifetime ago since we beat Roma in the Champions League and put all those goals past Alisson and I'm sure he was sick of the sight of Mohamed Salah. So yeah, four years ago today and I think we can say it's been an unmitigated success his time at Liverpool and I'm glad that we were able to keep him away from Real Madrid and other clubs who are interested because he just fits the club, doesn't he? He just fits Liverpool and he's been a great addition to the family. Uh, right, we move on. Football Insider claimed that Liverpool are very interested and exploring the possibility of signing Anthony from Ajax. Excuse me as I keep wiping the sweat off my nose, but it is warm today. Um, and again on this one, Look, I don't have any problems with Liverpool being linked to Anthony because I think that there is potential there for him to become an excellent, excellent player. He's good already, but I think he can push on. But I also don't like the price tags that are being mentioned of about 60 million quid. I think it's too much. Um, 
The article also links Manchester United's interest in them, which I think is, is stronger than ours, but they say that Liverpool are sounding out and exploring the possibility of signing Anthony from Ajax this summer. What do you think on this one, folks? I mean, they say it'll be as a Bobby Firmino replacement, which doesn't really make much sense because we know Bobby isn't going anywhere this summer. We know Jurgen Klopp's been massively impressed with Bobby and spoke about how well he looked in training. So I've got to be honest, I'd be absolutely surprised if uh, we did make a move for him. But if we're looking at next summer, if he hasn't moved, look, no issues. I think he's a good player. And if he goes to United, I won't be revisionary. I was still saying the same thing. He's a good player. Just not sure about that price tag. But... In fairness to the guys a Football Insider, they did say that both clubs are a little bit put off by the potential price tag that Ajax are looking for him. He's only had like one full season in the Eredivisie. I believe he spent half the season before that uh, in the first team, half of it in the second team or something along those lines. But it's a lot of money. And I kind of am getting a little bit annoyed now with football transfers that one semi-decent season on a player becomes a 50 million, a 60 million, a 70 million quid player. And look... 40 million for me would be a fair price for Anthony, maybe a little bit more. But if Liverpool or Manchester United do get the player, it will be a good signing and probably is one of the uh, best players in the Eredivisie. So one to keep an eye on maybe, but I don't really know about a Bobby Firmino replacement coming in this summer. Um, another bit of news that is probably more reliable is that Liverpool are one of a host of European clubs who are taking a look at Aston Villa's uh, rising young star, Carney Chukwemenka, who is refusing to sign an extension at Aston Villa. Barcelona are a club that have been very strongly linked with them in recent days. Um, the reason probably for that is if his contract runs down and Barcelona sign him, I think it's like 250 grand, something like that, Aston Villa will be due um, for his footballing education and his compensation. Whereas if he went to another English club, i.e. Liverpool, in this scenario, we'd have to go to a tribunal or agree a compensation fee with Aston Villa, much like we did with uh, Harvey Elliott and with Danny Ings before him. And we have this really bad knack of having to pay record fees for tribunals. So I know, and I can say to you guys without any doubt that Liverpool are certainly monitoring Chukwemenka and have done for a very long time. I know I'm probably mispronouncing his surname, so I do apologise, but he is a talent, no doubt about it. Somebody who I think we probably should keep an eye on because it wouldn't surprise me if Liverpool try and do like they did with Fabio Carvalho and with Harvey Elliott and bring through another undoubted young talent who could save us a lot of money in the future. So let me know your thoughts on any of the things I've spoken about today, particularly the Anthony and Chukwemenka bits because they're probably the most high profile of them. Uh, and again, just give me my credit. Give me my credit when we sign when we sign Jukes. Just give me my credit. That's all I ask. We never get mentioned anywhere, even though we were the first ones to tell people about Carvalho way ahead of anybody else. So just this one time, pretty please. Just just give us a little bit of credit. That's all we ask. Joking aside though, thank you guys for tuning in as always. I hope you're I would say enjoying the good weather, but I hope you're surviving in the good weather. And I hope you've got plenty of liquids and all your families are safe, well, and cooling off. Right. Same time tomorrow. I'll see you guys then. Lots of love. Take care. Bye-bye.